Ron and I today are going to be talking about two different topics. I'm going to start off with viewing and analyzing student responses who are nonverbal using Google Classroom and Google Meet. I've had a lot of questions about, especially for our nonverbal students, how to see what the student is uh, responding with because their communication display is often in front of them so the teacher can't see it. Um, so they can't see where the student is pointing on their display when they're using the virtual learning platform, Google Meet. Um, and it's also difficult um, to, to see their responses through Google Classroom because again, they're pointing to a display versus writing. So I wanted to go, I, I mentioned it briefly last week, these two tools, but I'm going to go a little bit uh, more in depth with that, how to, how to set that up for students. And then after that, Brian's going to talk about low vision and accessibility options for students and teachers to utilize. So we'll go ahead and get started with viewing and analyzing student responses who are nonverbal. The first tool I want to talk about is using Google Classroom, because I know a lot of you all are using Google Classroom to assign things to students and to for the students to submit their work back to you. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my Google Classroom where I've created a literacy activity. It's a shared reading activity. So I've put my instructions in the activity and then I've got some questions that I want the student to answer when we're finished with the story. And the nice thing about Google Classroom is you can upload everything right into the assignment. So there's a one stop shop for the parents. They don't have to go back and forth between things. So the first thing I did was I added the video that I wanted the student to listen to of a story. So this one's just the happy star and the parent can click on the link and it takes you right to the video. And you can add videos directly into your assignment by just hitting the add button and then clicking on YouTube and then entering the URL for the video, click add, and then it'll pop up right into your assignment. The next thing I like to add inside my assignment is a communication board. Some of our students may not have their low tech communication boards at home. Some may, and they can use that, but if they don't, you can go ahead and upload a communication board for the assignment right into the Google Classroom platform. I'm just using a generic board for any book. And you would do that by clicking the add button, file, and then uploading either from your computer, your drive, your shared drives, wherever you have your communication board stored. And then I also like to add a data sheet. That way the parent, if they have access to a computer, can print it or if you want to send it home in their packets, you can send it home with their paper packets. And they, the data collection form is very user friendly. They just have to put the, the date and time, the person who's collecting the data, so parent, grandma, aunt, uncle, the activity that they're doing, and then it's just simple tally marks. So if you're looking at how they're using their communication board, they would just put a tally mark if they responded independently on their board, or if they needed a model, or if they didn't respond at all or refused to respond, or if maybe you were seeing some sensory or perseverative behaviors. And then there's this column for notes, additional comments. You can adapt this data collection form for anything. So if you just want it to be, you know, a reading comprehension data sheet, you could change these to they got the answer correct, incorrect, or they got it correct after uh, some prompting. Or you could put, you know, they refuse to respond. And then again, you can add your comments there. So once we have those in place, then we can create a Google form by hitting create Google forms. And I've created one for this activity. And once we create our Google form, we can have two options for the, for the parent to submit the student's work. The parent can either take a picture of the completed data sheet and then just click add file and upload it straight to the Google form. Or they can take a video of the student responding to the questions on their communication display and then hit add file and directly upload the video of the student responding on their communication display. 
it may be easier if you uh, instruct the parents ahead of time to download the Google Classroom app to their phone. That way, when they take the video or pictures on their phone, they can go ahead and directly upload it right from their phone and make it a lot easier on them. So that's using Google Classroom. And I included this slide from the Kentucky Special Education Cooperatives. They did a, a presentation on me meaningful progress monitoring. And it just kind of highlights the steps that we just talked about. You can send the paper copy of the curriculum-based measures home, or you can provide it through Google Classroom. And make sure you provide explicit instructions. And then the parent takes the data, and then they can submit the data back to the teacher for analyze for analyzing either through their paper packet or through the Google Classroom platform. And then there's the sample data sheet that I had uploaded into my uh, Google Classroom assignment that you all can use and adapt as you see fit. The next option is through the virtual learning platform, the Google Meet platform, where you can use grid view to see yourself and the students. And you can also split your screen so that you can see the activity that's displayed and you can see yourself and the students at the same time. And the presentation before us just kind of touched on using split screen, using a dualist, I think that's how they pronounced it, a Chrome extension. I usually just hit my Windows button and right or left arrow key and then just drag my screen over. But I'm gonna show you all a video because she, describes very well how to set this up and how to use highlighting on a communication display so that you can model for the student. So I'm going to go ahead and play that for you all and I've got it linked up here as well. All right, this video is going to discuss how to share a window with your student's AAC system in it so that you can provide aided language stimulation during teletherapy using the platform Google Meet. So how I have myself set, set up right now in Google Meet is that I'm always going to take um, a separate window here to have my videos in and a separate tab or window to have the activity that I want to share. This is going to allow me to have a, a view of myself, view of my student, and whatever it is that I'm sharing with my student. I like to be able to see myself so that whatever materials I'm um, sharing or showing, I can see how it's coming across to my student. I, of course, want to see my student, and I want to be able to see um, my AAC system so that I can provide aided language stimulation. I'm going to show you a couple different options of how you can present in AAC system using just your computer and your video platform. So I'm not going to talk about iPad mirroring or anything like that if you don't have that available. So the first thing is say our activity is we're gonna read not my hippopotamus and we're gonna model not. I have the past software from PRC that's a free download and I'll put a link. You can also get the chat editor software from Saltillo. I have the Toby Dynavox um, Snap Plus Core pulled up here that again you can download for free on your computer. You can have be presenting your activity to your student and providing your aided language stimulation. If you don't have the option to have your student's um, system be able to be downloaded on your computer, or say they're using a low-tech core board, you can take a screenshot of that and put it into Google Slides. I have two tips that kind of make that smoother. So the first thing is that I put in this highlighter so that I can highlight our target button. How I did that was I did insert. I inserted a shape which I chose a square. I drew it so that it was a little bit bigger than my button in your fill color. I made that transparent so that you could see the target button. I chose a bright highlighting color and then I increased the border weight so that it was a little bit thicker um, so that it became a nice highlight. So then, since I'm in Google Slides, I don't need my student to see all of these tools. I just want them to see their core board or their system. So what you can do is you can minimize everything else in the screen. When you're in that tab, push Control minus, and that's going to shrink everything, um, all those tools down, and show just a nice view of your core board so that, again, Say we're doing our activity and we're modeling that, I can give my student that highlighter and show them that that's our target board for the activity. Now, what this is going to look like on your student's end 
um, and how you're going to present is going to depend on what platform they have. So if they are accessing your teletherapy on a computer, the best thing I've found is when you present. So you're going to hover your arrow down here to share that screen. Say present now. And if they're on a computer, I would say just present a window and select that window. So you're going to go in any of your tabs that are open, you'll select and that's what you're going to share. Now, if your student is on an iPad or on a phone, they're, they would only be able to see that window plus themselves, which you want them to be able to see you. So on a phone, it does um, look fine if you are presenting your whole window. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So if you say present now and choose present your entire screen, you have to select it and then you say share. So my student is accessing their teletherapy on a phone here. So because I shared my entire screen, you can see that they have, they'll be able to see their board and they're going to see a nice big video of you and a video of themselves. And so um, if you only shared the window, they're going to get the window and themselves, which is not ideal. So those are the, um, the tricks I've figured out for um, getting your students a C system presented to them using this platform, Google Meet. Okay. And Cindy, so I'm going to, I, I'm going to need the power of pause to learn that awesome stuff again, because she just went through it quickly. But my mind is also blown at how she blended all of those tools so well together. So thank you for sharing that. And that's linked inside your presentation, correct? That's correct. It's right above that little video that's embedded in there. And yeah, I, I liked how well she explained everything. It's clear. It's precise. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's a four minute video. Um, and I love the how, the way she does the highlighting tool. I think that's very helpful when you're trying to, to model on a display when you're doing virtual training. She really blew my mind to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and uh, the guided reading, um, she's kind of doing a, a guided reading activity. And again, the ladies before me that presented before me uh, touched on guided reading. And I think they have some nice, helpful resources for guided reading using virtual learning platforms as well. So y'all might want to check that out. Okay. Oh, and the, the, the displays that she was talking about, the past software and the snap core and the uh, new voice chat editor software, that's all linked uh, in one of the videos that we did a couple weeks ago. So if you all need access to that, go back and check those out and you'll find those links there. This is just a Google slide that I created. She, when she was demonstrating her, she was showing herself in a window reading a book, but you can also in your Google slides, embed the video. I, I embedded a star, but Oprah reading a book, and then you can pause it in between and then ask the student questions as you're reading. So that's one way to set up your Google slides. And then of course, over here on the side, if you're in grid view with split screen, you would see yourself and the student on the side. Now, as far as assessing using technology, you've got your virtual platform. Again, this came from the Kentucky Special Education Cooperative's Meaningful Progress Monitoring PowerPoint. If you want to observe in real time, you can have the parent signed in to the Google meeting at the same time that the student is signed in. The student would be on the computer, the parent would be on their phone, and then the parent can just direct their phone camera to the computer screen while the student is answering on the communication display that's provided on the screen. The other option is to have the parent record the student responding on their display and then submit it to you either through your Google Classroom platform with that Google form that we talked about, um, or they can email it to you, whatever you all decide is the most secure way to do that. And then once you see the in real time or the recording, you can evaluate and analyze the student's work. Last thing I wanted to touch on, a lot of our parents are being immersed with AAC at home more so than usual due to our unique circumstances right now, which I think in the long run is going to be a good thing. Uh, but a lot of them may be overwhelmed if they're not used to doing this. So here's a link for 10 strategies to train parents and improve carryover for students using AAC. And I'll just click on that. And if you scroll down, it's got the strategies listed. And it also has a do's and don'ts for AAC. It's a nice little visual for 
parents, caregivers, anyone that has a student that uses AAC. And if you scroll down even further, it's got the poster version that you can download and share out through your Google Classroom or through your uh, packets. And I've put a screenshot here of another AAC bootcamp poster of do's and don'ts. If you Google AAC do's and don'ts, you'll find different versions of these, but they all have pretty much the same information. So now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and hand it over to Brian. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go over some low vision tools and Google accessibility option for students, but also teachers to utilize uh, mailing the Chromebooks since they have been uh, sent out to many students. And I know that many of them, some of the vision students do also have their iPads and everything. Um, but I get this question a lot from vision teachers and also teachers in general in the schools about um, getting access uh, on the Chromebook. Um, and it can do lots of things. There's a lot of acceptability features built in to uh, Chromebooks that many people don't realize. And so I'm gonna go over quickly some of those today um, and then just throw a couple other um, ideas in there. All right, so built-in Chromebook, Zoom, and magnification. So um, things are different on a Chromebook than they are inside of your Chrome browser on your PC. So if you're a teacher and you have some of your PCs, some of these will not work quite like the same it does on a Chromebook. It's, uh, it's, it's almost similar, but it's a little bit different. So it's specific to a Chromebook. Increasing the size of browser content is by hitting the, the keys on your keyboard, control and the plus, okay? So that'll increase everything on that Chromebook. And control and minus, obviously we can do the same. It's kind of control, but it's gonna decrease and control and zero to go back to default. Pretty much across all platforms, control and zero is your, almost your go-to as far as resetting where you need to get back to being at, whether it's on a PC and so on. Um, so increasing the size of all the items, on the on the screen. So what the students looking at on the screen. So shift plus and or how the control off there. So control shift plus and control shift minus. So those are key because lots of times, even I know in a browser, it's only going to increase the size of my menu items. It's going to decrease the size inside this inside my say my Google Slides. Um, but on a Chromebook, I think it's very handy actually that using control shift plus and control shift minus allows them to quickly zoom in on the entire screen. And just like above, um, control shift minus or the zero to go back and recess um, to the default uh, viewing uh, magnification settings. Um, so there are built-in full screen uh, magnifiers. So what you do, um, I know I saw uh, Steve Durham in 19, clicking the snowman and the Rolling Stone. So, uh, I'm um, old school and I call everything ellipses or the more more menu. But so yes, you click the snowman, the three dots stacked up uh, vertically and go through the settings on your top right of your um, browser um, or the clock in the lower right. So on the Chromebooks, you can, it's more easy. I, I find it easier to go into that clock area, click on there, go to settings. And you can actually have it once you find accessibility in your settings, make it so that accessibility icon is always there. That way it's quick and easy to access for a student. And they can go in that way, they can also go in and turn on or off certain accessibility settings and manage those accessibility features. Um, so you can also enable full screen or the dock magnifier. Uh, usually people have a preference. I'm a fan of full screen. I like, I have the ability to follow my cursor around and kind of know where I'm at. Some students and individuals don't like that. They like the docked and being able to uh, move their cursor and know they know where they're at and wherever they're know that they're navigating to they can see it up on the docked menu it splits the screen basically in two um, and just showing one area that's um, magnified uh, there's also some other features in that same area um, I'll go to a minute go and in, go into in a minute um, so high contrast mode so there's an example, small example over here. Basically, what we all know now is on, all, on a lot of platforms is that dark mode, right? So that suits everybody. I know on my iPad myself, I pretty much keep my iPad in um, night mode, dark mode all the time. Uh, I, I never even switch it back hardly. Um, but there's some short, short <laughs> keyboard shortcuts for this. Uh, control search H to quickly navigate in and out of high contrast mode on the Chromebook. 
Additional accessibility features. Um, and at the end of this, I'll uh, have a moment to kind of show one of the ideas um, that I have for uh, multiple individuals. Um, so you can do a large mouse cursor. Uh, it makes the cursor larger and easier to see. Uh, when I'm not in Chrome, you don't see Baby Yoda. Uh, you'll see actually my very large uh, arrow and cursor that I have turned on through my PC uh, ease of access settings. Mono audio plays the same audio from both speakers to so someone with limited hearing in one ear, doesn't miss context, it comes out in stereo sound. So mono, but people don't really think about it too much. If you have a stronger ear, you want all that sound to go through that one head side. So a lot of the, a lot of the pods, the ear pods, have been great for that because you can select one or the other that all the sound goes through. Highlighting mouse cursor. I love this one, actually. Um, I kind of wish it was in uh, ease of access settings on a PC, but I haven't really found a way to like make it come through, maybe outside of a third-party software. So it puts a red ring around your cursor, no matter how large it is, and it makes it easy to follow around on the screen. So you can always find it. So that's great for low vision individuals or anyone. Um, automatic clicks is what I mentioned at the end and also sticky keys. And if I have a moment at the end, I'll show you quickly on video how that can help for students with motor challenges. Okay, so they may have a joystick if they especially have an kind of inability to use a mouse possibly. And when they hover through dwell, it'll allow them to either to select pressure or to automatically click uh, that item that they've hovered the mouse over. Sticky keys. I know I have a personal story of a student that did not know this existed this year, and we were on a PC, so we hit the shift key five times. It turns on the sticky keys automatically on and off, and that allows you, because you only had one use of one um, hand, and it allowed him to hit shift and capitalize. He did not know that, so many people don't. I come across that all the time, um, so that's some valuable info for you all to take on as well. So in a large mouse cursor in a Chromebook, uh, you turn it on. Once you get into accessibility settings here, um, there's where the auto click is when the mouse cursor stops. Uh, you can adjust the cursor size to be very large um, and also highlight the mouse cursor when it is moving. So it's moving across, it's going to get that red ring around it. Uh, using Chromevox screen reader, it's built into a Chromebook. So that's a screen reader just like VoiceOver for the iPad to quickly get in and out because quickly, trust me, if you don't read the instructions, you will get quickly annoyed if you don't know how to navigate it. Uh, Control Alt Z. It's your emergency go to to enable or disable at any time to get out um, and then disable. You can disable the uh, extension if you're on a Chrome uh, browser, but control is able to automatically turn it off. Braille users can use a connect refresh with Braille if needed. Screen readers will work without Braille. You don't have to have both. So students who use screen readers can use um, just screen reader alone. You can connect refresh with Braille display or by Bluetooth to read and edit Google Docs and other applications. Uh, let's see, uh, this is voice typing. Besides voice typing dots, you can also enable dictation on a Chromebook. I mentioned this yesterday. It's just, many people don't know this as well. I have a link here, go into it, and you can turn on dictation. Basically, in the bottom part of your screen, your taskbar on a Chromebook, it puts a microphone. Any field you can type text into, you can speak into it. You activate it, and you can even type directly speak to text directly into the slide, not the speaker notes, but directly into the slide itself. So that's awesome. Lots of people ask about that. So in here, just has some, again, click on the snowman, those three vertical dots, and this will walk you through also turning that off or on. Um, probably not gonna have time for this, I'll skip over this. Just check out this add-on for Google Slides. If you're on a PC, um, I came across this. It's just an add-on for Google Slides and it allows you to translate to 60 different languages, text us on a slide, but also it allows you to type directly into a text box or plan it directly into a Google Slide. So not a, as cool as what the Chromebook can do, but pretty handy. Um, some other resources here for TVIs. Um, I want to include some for you here at the end. I got a link here. Um, some of you probably know about this, the Virtual Expanded Core Education Learning Program for students with visual impairments. Weekly program that will allow you to um, sign your students in. They can get these classes. You can too. And it goes through um, many different types of teaching Braille, um, screen readers, and so on. Uh, remember to tell them to your students and families that to share with students besides Chromebooks, you can they can download JAWS for free right now at Zoom Text um, Fusion, and as always, MBDA remains free for the PC. Uh, let me see here. I want to exit out of this actually. 
And I want to see I doubt I can do that. Um, I'm going to stop screen sharing. And I'm going to come back. And hopefully you can see me. Um, I was hoping to use my document camera, but it wasn't initializing with the document camera I have hooked up to the uh, my computer. We can see um, you, Brian. You're good. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, this is a Braille display. Um, and people don't know what. Be like, what is that? We I will use, we'll use acronyms like RBD. So that's for the for refreshable Braille display. You have your keys for your Braille right here. These are your Braille refreshable Braille keys. Above each one of these, you can't see it on here is a cursor key. That's how students and individuals navigate the uh, cursor, whatever text field they're in on inside of a, whatever platform they're on. Um, Cause these look up to iPads and so on. So they can be hooked up by um, Bluetooth to a Chromebook actually, or an iPad. Um, the idea I had behind, sorry, is that coming out here? Um, and these are becoming better. These are, um, this one's not Bluetooth, actually routes through a uh, plug-in cursor, um, plug-in Bluetooth, uh, <laughs> USB stick and a student can control this. So this was a great idea, I think, for students who have to have a Chromebook. Um, but you could, if you had one to plug in, you could actually hook them up with a uh, joystick and have them control the mouse on the thing and have it automatically dwell click on anything they're trying to navigate to. So students with a cerebral palsy, so on. Um, I know we're down to the last minute. Do we have any questions? Well, we actually don't have many questions. We do have Dr. Coleman, who's in here, uh, who's live with us on the chat. So welcome, Dr. Coleman. But we have uh, a lot of just reiterations of some of the uh, things that you have said about the, the cursor and uh, definitely the the access to these. One of the things, though, that I love about some of these tools, and not necessarily the visually impaired ones, but our general ed kids can benefit from these as well. So that cursor is uh, beneficial, not just for students who um, have tracking disabilities or um, inability to see things that are, you know, uh, a little bit further away, but uh, just for everybody to use uh, these tools because uh, they'll benefit everybody. So thank you guys so much for doing this. Um, I want to make sure that uh, we let everybody know that your presentation is linked into the schedule. So if you want uh, access to the links that they that Cindy and Brian shared, you have access to all